So now let's look at the exact same setup, except instead of at the end of one year, let's look at the end of 10 years. And this is where I want you to notice the main difference between compound interest and simple interest. For simple interest, if I'm saving the money for 10 times as long, I'll get 10 times as much interest. So instead of $30, right, it'll give me $300, right, or $304.20, okay? So if this were simple interest, Uh, we would collect at the end of 10 years, $1,304.20. I'm just putting that there as sort of a reference. That's not part of the question. And I, I did that a little bit mentally. You know, if you were doing that, you should probably use the formula and, and, and be real clear about it. Okay. All right. Um, we only have to do this one way or another. You don't, you don't have to use both the formula and the calculator app. So you just kind of pick one. But I'm a really big fan of using this calculator app because it makes things very simple, okay? So for example, if I, all I wanted to do was change the t to a 10, I'd say, oh, up here we have 12 times 10 instead of 12 times 1. The i percent stays the same. The present value stays the same. These are still monthly, so that's still 12, okay? So then I hit solve and I get $1,349.35. Okay. All right, so you'll notice that that's more money than simple interest. And the reason that it's more is because every month the amount of interest is getting put into our account and we're getting interest on that interest. Okay. Now, one of the things I want you to know, though, it's more. It's not like astonishingly more, right? Notice that the interest on the interest doesn't make this jump up by a huge amount. Because if I'm starting with $1,000, okay, I'm my first month, I may be getting like $2.50 interest. So how much interest do I get on $2.50? Not much, right? Okay, so it adds something and it can be significant, especially over a long period of time, but it's not necessarily super drastic, okay? It gets more drastic if you have higher percentages and longer periods of time, okay? Then, then it grows faster and faster, okay? But, um, for, for shorter amounts of time uh, and for smaller interest rates, it, it doesn't make as, as big, uh, as noticeable a difference. Okay. All right, let's look at another one. How much should you put into a savings account now? So that's asking me how much to start with. Okay, so this is asking me to find P or the present value. Okay, at 7% interest, so my interest rate is 0 0.07, compounded quarterly, so N is four, to end up with, so I want a, uh, an ending amount A or future value of $6,000 in eight years. So T is eight. So as I read through the problem, I write down what those pieces of information are. And for me, that's the, uh, the safest way to avoid making a mistake. Okay. That way, when I'm entering stuff in my calculator, I can read directly what it is, and I'm not like reading a bunch of words as I'm figuring out what to put where. Okay. Um, I think the best way to avoid making simple mistakes is to not do two things at once. Okay. And I don't know if you guys have this experience in math classes before. You get a test back, and you're like, oh, I know how to do that, but I made some silly mistakes. I left out some negatives. Or, you know, I added two and three and got six because instead of adding, I multiplied. Silly mistakes like that happen. And what I like to do is create habits that will make me less likely to make those, those silly or simple mistakes. Okay. And I find that if I write out my information directly in the symbols that I'm going to punch in as a separate step than punching them in, then I'm less likely to make a mistake. Okay. So then if I want to compute my uh, ending amount A, or sorry, my present amount PV, 
using a formula, okay, um, here the formula P, remember it's A divided by that parenthesis thing. I'll just write it down here. And so then if I plug in the numbers, and you can plug them in here or just plug them directly in your calculator, but for taking notes, I'll write it down. So we have 6,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 4 to the power of 4 times 8. Okay. So 6,000 divided by parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 4, close the parentheses to the power of 4 times 8, and we get $3,443.89. I already forgot the number. $3,443.89. Okay. And um, we could have also used our, our calculator app. Okay. So the capital N is going to be 4 times 8. The interest rate is 7%. We don't know how much we're starting with, so I can leave that blank for now. I want to end up with 6,000. And the payments per year, the P over Y stands for payments per year, C over Y is compounds per year. Okay. I'm going to change that to 4 and go back up. It's the present value I want to solve for. So I hit alpha and hit solve. And that gives me the number I wanted, $3,443.89. How does n equal 32? So remember that the capital N is uh, equal to little n times t. So in this problem, the capital N Okay, is 4 times 8. Okay, so when I entered on my calculator, I enter 4 times 8, and it when I hit enter, it, it automatically does the multiplication for me. Okay, so I don't I don't have to mental math, even even like simple multiplication, I don't have to mental math. 